Now that Dr. Ali Isa Chikaji is here, Dr. Ali Isa Chikaji is the product of University Technology Malaysia and currently is the president of global uh, alumni of the University Technology Malaysia. Doctor, you are welcome. And may I have the privilege and honor to invite you and also give us, unveil, whom are we with today, Professor Noor Haniza Sami. Doctor, sir. Unmute. Unmute. Yeah, not here. We will have a Okay. Thank you very much to my dear brother and Dr. Abdul Mumini Inda. It's um, uh, nice to have me here. Uh, the biography of an erudite scholar, researcher, supervisor, and a mother. Dr. Nur Hadniza Sarmin, whom we fondly call Prof. Niza, is a professor of mathematics at the Faculty of Science University Technology Malaysia, UTM Johor Bahru, Johor. She received her BSc Hunts, Masters, and PhD in Mathematics from State University of New York, now known as Binghamton University, BU, Binghamton in the New York, United States of America. Her specialization of research is in group theory, graph theory, formal language theory, splicing systems, and their applications. She has written more than 500 research papers in national and international journals and proceedings, mainly in the area of group theory and splicing systems. She is currently an associate editor of an indexed journal called Malaysian Journal of Mathematical Sciences, MGMS. Prof. Niza has also supervised and graduated well over 60 postgraduate students and around 100 undergraduate students under her supervision. More than two thirds of the postgraduate students are PhDs. This includes the youngest PhD holder in Malaysia Book of Records 2014. Dr. Hazira Izzati Mat Hasim. In 2023, Prof. Noor Haniza has been selected as a recipient of recognized research supervisor by the UK Council for Graduate Education, UKCGE, for her excellent supervisory practice. Prof. Noor Haniza has secured over 20 research grants as the leader and over 30 as collaborator. She was holding the position of the head of postgraduate department in Faculty of Science from 2020, 2007 to 2012. The deputy dean in the School of Graduate Studies, UTM from 2012 to 2016. Prof. Niza was the Director of Global Education and Student Experience in UTM International, UTMI, from April 2016 to March 2018. She was the Associate Director of Student uh, Services and Global Education Experience from 1st April 2018 to 14th of August 2019, and later the Associate Director, Global Strategy and Engagement from August 2019 to December 
2022. Prof. Niza was also appointed as the acting director of UTM International from August 2022 to January 2023. Uh, in addition, Prof. Niza has been appointed by the Ministry of Higher Education as UTM Internal Auditor for Myra since 2017. She was also appointed as a UTM Senator from January 2020 to January 2023. Prof. Niza has truly been a mentor for so long. Prof. Niza had, and she is still training leaders and speakers. Prof. Niza is known to be very innovative and had initiated high impact programs, many of which have increased the visibility of UTM and its ranking. The mobility program is one, and it has increased the number of different nationals from different continents in UTM. On behalf of our Mammoth UTM graduates globally, who met and got inspired from Prof. Dr. Niza, I, Dr. Ali Isa Chikaji, unveil this rarest iconic personality of global reckoning. I indeed congratulate the vibrancy, proactiveness of the Vice Chancellor of Taraba State University in person of Professor Sunday Paul Bako and the Dean of Postgraduate Studies in person of Professor Mustafa Baba Ibi for the adventure of discovering University Technology Malaysia UTM. This is a leap of faith that can change the nation through the nature's gift to the university. Taraba State University, Jalingo. Once again, congratulations for the worthy synergy with our alma mater, the University Technology Malaysia. And I would like to, at this juncture, thank Professor Sunday for giving us and giving UTM, our dear brother in person of Dr. Abdul Mumini Inda. Indeed, Dr. Abdul Mumini Inda is a blessing to Taraba State University, to University Technology Malaysia, and to all of us. Thank you very much, Prof, and thank you everyone. Back to the master or anchor, the moderator of this grand lecture, Dr. Abdul Mumini Inda. Over to you, please. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful citation reading. Uh, and thank you for the compliment. May we all be blessing to humanity at large. And I believe today is one of the steps taken in the right direction. Prof. Noor Haniza Samin, it will interest you to know that Taraba State University, when they mean to do something, they mean it and they can do it. If, if we want to push, if they want to push a whole mountain, they are all out until done. And it is now time that we have a professor, Vice Chancellor Sunday Paul Babo, with his own vibrant and active Deputy Vice Chancellors. They are all my bosses when I was there. They met me, alhamdulillah. Uh, we were there as men, they mentor a lot of us. My, my, my dean is also there, uh, Dr. Baba Ahmad, of course, Dean Faculty of Education. And the next collaboration starts with the faculty and the faculty of social sciences as we go on engineering and other faculties, one by one, UTM will be in TSU and TSU will be in UTM and together they will be in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to allow this piece for Professor Noor Haniza Samin for our own presentation. Professor. Thank you very much, Dr. Inda. 
our MC of the day. Uh, thank you, Dr. Aliu, for the kind introduction. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon from Malaysia. I want to first thank the Vice Chancellor, Professor Bako, for this opportunity and especially to Prof. Mustafa, the Dean, for inviting me. It was really, really nice meeting you last year. Let me share my slide. And to all participants here, I see the deans, professors, and hopefully quite a number of supervisors. And I heard some students. Actually, Aliu and all, this is the first time I'm giving this sharing to outside Malaysia. I've been uh, sharing my experience in many universities in Malaysia. So let me start by sharing my slide. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. It's clear. Yes, we can see. It. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So just call me uh, Proniza. Everybody call me Proniza. This is the view from outside my office and nearby also that the Indus office right now is the mosque. Mm. I also want to welcome my student, Dr. Faiz, uh, from Pakistan, who is here, Dr. Rabiha from Saudi, and also Dr. Ibrahim to join us today. So I can see in the hall, in the big lecture, the poster. I wish I was there in the university, maybe one day. <laughs> if uh, you have flown this, uh, Dr. Inda Aliu and your vice chancellor, but to those who have not been to Malaysia, you are all very welcome to fly to Malaysia. So we are only about 10,000 kilometer in distance and 12 hour flight, and we are seven hours apart. So it's the morning there and afternoon here. And Malaysia, just to quick show of Malaysia, we are 13 states, quite uh, small compared to Nigeria. We are here in Johor Bahru, just across Singapore. You can actually walk to Singapore across the bridge, but we also have another campus in Kuala Lumpur. So you can fly to Kuala Lumpur, you can fly to Singapore. So this is where we are. Uh, I'm sharing this again because Aliyu has mentioned it, but just to show this is very important, how I got recruited from my PhD to where I am right now. So I have a Bachelor of Mathematics and also minor in Economics. And then I continue until my master's. Right away, I started work with UTM in 1991 for three years, and then I continue for my PhD. So I was an international student for the whole of my degrees. And this is when I started my PhD. I went and worked with UTM for three years. I got married, I got two sons, and then I went back to the university and bringing the whole family. And my husband also continued for his degree in the small town, Binghamton. Skudai is just like Binghamton, if you've been in Skudai. And for the administration, uh, I started to join 32 years ago in UTM. And then after I came back from my PhD, I started to be a supervisor. And after a few years, they uh, appointed me to be the head Department of Postgraduate Studies. And I started to take care of all the postgraduate students in the faculty. So these students now, most of them, they become lecturers now. After that, the, uh, I was the deputy dean in the School of Post Postgraduate Studies in UTM for four years. And then I met most of you, Aliyu and others, well, I was in UTM uh, International. I was handling also the mobility, the activity of the students, and then also uh, some uh, the visa. Uh, before, I was the uh, Associate Director of Global Strategy and Engagement until end of last year when I met your Vice Chancellor and manage the visits uh, to UTM and manage also the ranking of UTM. I was the acting director for a few months before now I'm back to the Faculty of Science, become a full professor. And being a Senate member also helps me a lot in knowing everything that is going on in the university. 
back to why we are here today. You have to know what is a supervisor, right? An academic supervisor is a member of the faculty who offers guidance to one or more graduate students uh, in the graduate study. And the supervisor must follow up with the student from his acceptance in the program until he obtains the certificate or in our case, the Senate letter. Now, let me share first about the roles and responsibility of a supervisor coming from our graduate school. I'm sure this is very similar to other universities to provide guidance on the expected forms and quality of research. This includes the planning, literature resources, how our students should attend the classes or having the techniques, or to my students, if they don't have enough background, I will ask them to attend the lecture provided by the department. Assist in the implementation of, if you have to go to field work or lab work or survey, follow the development in the area of research up until the night of the viva. They have to follow the latest literature review. Advice on the dates. There are many dates that have, they have to know throughout their study. Revise research papers. This is what a supervisor should do and return with constructive comments within a reasonable time. Encourage students to present their work in seminars and publish in journals. Make assessment and submit progress report at the appointed time for each semester. After this, I will show you how I do these roles and responsibilities and uh, share some of the tips. Ensure the safety procedures. Schedule, hold and record regular meetings with students under our supervision. Encourage students to submit thesis within the normal period of study. We call it GOT, graduate on time, as mentioned by Inda earlier. In UTM, a GOT for PhD is within 36 months for UTM and 42 months for Ministry of Higher Education. In other uni uh, universities might be different. Like in the US, normally four to five years. Yeah, And the main supervisor must work along with co-supervisors with all the supervision, if you have more than one supervisor. Maintain good relationship, avoid any conflict. And you also have to nominate the internal and external examiners for your students and ensure your students are aware of the rules and information for the registration. You have to revise and ensure that the thesis has reached the level of award before the student can submit their thesis for VIVA. And you have to present in UTM, it's compulsory for the supervisor to be there during VIVA. And then later on after VIVA, you have to assist in the correction of the thesis. Not yet 100 LU, but close to. I have supervised and graduated 85 undergraduate final year project students from since 92 to 2023, around 30 years. And 28 master students from those years. And mostly they are dissertation in which I supervise for two semesters, the taking mixed mode, and also a five for full research. And they come from not only Malaysia, but I have some uh, others from abroad, like from Libya, from Nigeria, uh, from Iraq and others. And quite a number from them continue from their master to their PhD with me. And I also have graduated 40 PhD students up until this year from 2004. And um, among from those, 27 locals and 13 international students, and 31 as main supervisor and nine as co-supervisor. These students that I co-supervise, I call them great uh, uh, grandchildren, and the others, they are all my children. When I co, it's because the main was my students, and they came from these countries, Iran, Pakistan, Yemen, Libya, Nigeria, Sudan, Arabia, and Afghanistan. Mentioned by Aliu earlier, the youngest PhD holder, she graduated within 24 years and two months because she is a fast track student from undergraduate straight to PhD without any masters. 
And right now, I'm currently supervising nine PhD students, uh, six as main and three as co-supervisor uh, from Malaysia and also from uh, Saudi. I keep track of the record of all my students graduated under me from the first one starting 2004 until 2007. And you can see all the names, the year, and the semester they submitted their thesis, some of them are doing was doing this part time. So you can see mostly six semester they submit their thesis, some twelve because she was working and doing it part time, and the title are mostly uh, in mathematics. And uh, this is some more. And forty of them. And you see some of them, they graduated early and you have to apply to, to graduate earlier than usual, like the fifth semester. And you can see Dr. Faiz. Which one is your name? Yeah, number 13, yeah. You graduated in the fifth semester. And this is the students right now. Uh, some of them are teaching, so they are doing part-time. I'm still counting the students to submit their thesis. So, and I keep track of their names to make sure that these active students on the far left, they are there, they submit registration and some others. And I try to put them all together. So I remember which student graduated in which year, and doing which title so I can match them up. I will show you later. And uh, some tips on how to be an impactful supervisor. I will be sharing what I did before, during and after. And before I do the supervision, how do we get students? Inda, how do you know how to continue in UTM? Some students, they look around if they are not from that university, right? they will look at the website. So these students, international students, they send an email, they studied us. So what I, I mentioned to them that they have to send me the CV and the transcript. It's very, very important for me to know the background of the student before I can accept them. Because in my, in my area, you have to know lots of group theory before you can continue and or algebra, like Dr. Faiz, you did Fazi and Dr. Ibrahim. And I have to see whether you have taken enough courses. And I have to see, I have to ask whether, will you be sponsoring yourself or you probably have scholarship? This is very important also to make sure that you can survive for three or four years. And how do we get the topic of research? I have to choose a topic or the student choose the topic so I can help the, the student. Uh, for their studies. The student cannot expect that I can do everything because it's not my PhD, it's your PhD, but I should be able to assist. So as a supervisor, you need to be resourceful and knowledgeable. This is from our graduate school. You see the one on top is the master's journey. The one at the bottom is PhD journey. I'm sure most of you supervisors who have graduated for your PhD or even master's, master is much smoother, but PhD has up and down. As a supervisor, you have to be, you have to know this PhD journey or postgraduate journey and what the student should do each and every single semester. Like in UTM, you have to take two courses. And then you have to present for your first assessment. And then you have to continue and then send your notice or submission of thesis. All of this regulation is the first time to the student, but not to the supervisor. So this is very important. And how do you treat postgraduate students? They are mature students. Okay. How do you treat these students? They are different from the undergraduate students. And there are some things that we need to consider and how we can manage the time. You see, that's why I shared again that I was the administrator in UTM for 16 years before I finished uh, early of this year. So I really have to take care of the time with the students, not only postgraduate students, I also have undergraduate students. I also have to teach a class and the other colleagues in committee and others. 
mentioned by Ali earlier, I have research grants also that I have to manage. And from the grants, the grants can pay for the conferences of the students or the publication. You have to manage the work environment, people working with you, working under you and working around you. You have to develop your skill. You cannot just be static. And to manage our time for research, I actually still am learning also for my students. If there are new topic, I'm doing with them. And we have to do research, uh, teaching. Uh, being an administrator, I teach, teach only one um, courses or two. So how do you manage this while having all your students around become administrator also with your family? And you have to have your time for yourself and for leisure. So I sometimes play badminton with my students or with my family and to do ibadah and other activities. Everyone has 24 hours a day. Inda, you remember, you asked me, how do I manage my time? So everyone has 24 hours a day. So this is very important to manage our time. And also expectation in supervision from a supervisor and from a student. We have to be sure this is the expectation from supervisor and student. I give a survey to my students. Uh, this is not the regular number one is unsatisfactory, number five is satisfactory. You have to really read the answer. Number, number one, is it the supervisor's responsibility to select the research topic or the student is responsible for selecting his own? You know the link, I will share the slides later uh, in the, in, um, with, with everyone in my website. Uh, you can download this book. Everyone should have this book. This is a very good book by uh, UPM, you see Putra Malaysia. And the students, the one graduated, and the one active, they are still in session now, agree that it is in the middle, meaning the supervisor's responsibility to select a topic so the supervisor can help you out, and also the student responsibility to be selecting and to do literature review. So it's in the middle. The second one, should the supervisor insist on regular meeting or the student? Both. Is the supervisor who decide which framework most appropriate or the student still in the middle? The supervisor should check regularly that the student is working consistently or the student should have no account of how they spend their time. And depending on the student, some local students, they like the supervisor to always ask them, uh, what are you doing now? And some students, depending on the background, they are more independent than others. And the next one, timetable. Even some students like to have a regular meeting with the supervisor and emotional support. Yes, the student would like the supervisor to give more emotional support. And also the last one is the facilities. So the student said it's their responsibility to look at the facilities in the university. The the next one is the draft of the work. The students agree that the supervisor should look at the draft of the work to ensure the quality. What about supervisor accepting students when they have knowledge on the topic or they don't have specific knowledge? They can accept either one. You can learn, right? But to me, it's better that I have some knowledge on the topic. The supervisor should take over the final writing up, never or the writing should only be the student's own work. Yes, you cannot let your student to ask you to write their thesis. A warm and friendly relationship between supervisor and student is critical, yes. And they, nobody said it's inadvisable, okay? And the last one is, is the supervisor responsible for decision regarding the standard of the thesis? Yes. If you are given a thesis to be submitted, make sure that it is to the standard. The students sometimes don't know. And that's why sometimes they get bad results in the, during the viva. We don't want a mismatch. If the supervisor expect the student to be independent, and then the candidate depending 
too dependent on the supervisor. We want it to be level. We don't want a mismatch. Some tips from me. What I am doing right now is to schedule planning of meeting the students. Uh, this is my Facebook, actually. Uh, my name is Niza Sarmin. And uh, this is the close uh, Facebook group for my own students. I call it, uh, Aliu, you have never seen this. Because you're not my student and in the from Niza and the special people is for my student. So I will upload my schedule every week in the close group. Uh, book, uh, close group, and they will see exactly my schedule. And this is for this week. I'm taking leave on Sunday. Um, on Monday is today. This morning, I'm free to do whatever I want to do in the faculty. And then tomorrow, I have a meeting. So Wednesday, my student already gets some appointment. And on Thursday, I'm uh, attending a professional in Goral Talk and also another student. So they will comment there that they see, oh, can I meet you? Uh, because you are free now. And then after they comment, they want to meet me, I invite them in the Google Calendar. So we remember when to meet and everyone has to be punctual. This is just some sharing of uh, the planning of research discussion, uh, physical, right now we can go physical. So they came to my office and sometimes we try to solve some problems on the board. And I normally will ask also the co-supervisor or the main supervisor to discuss together. So we can uh, discuss uh, the details of the work if almost every week. I want it to be, if not every week, every two weeks. And if we can do it virtually right now, especially uh, after the pandemic, right? Uh, we don't have to be there. Uh, this uh, is a meeting of Dr. Ibrahim me with our student from Afghanistan. And this one is a student from Saudi with our external co-supervisor from Iran. And this one, uh, I need my board. So I was doing this with a student who is in Malaysia, but, but not in UTM. And also another one with uh, not in UTM. She's, uh, she has to teach full time in another state in Malaysia. But we meet and we discuss and we have like virtual board or real board. And we can also do this hybrid by hybrid. So... Uh, my student, uh, Atira, came to my office, and then we also have the uh, other student or co-supervisor in the Zoom. So we can do this uh, by hybrid. Or they came to my office, and if even the student cannot come because of the distance or on leave, we can still do this. So we can do from Nigeria to Malaysia, and you can also have uh, be uh, students from uh, UTM and co-supervising. And every end of the semester, I collect together, uh, all the students have to come and present their research progress uh, for their progress report. And then they can see uh, who's doing this, who is not doing that, and they can uh, Having a systematic record is uh, very, very important. For all my students, I share uh, the Google Drive. Okay, this is the Google Drive for my active students. So everyone has their own drive. Uh, before COVID, I do it in the file, in the physical, but right now we can just share it in Google Drive. So in each one of those, uh, the, for the student, uh, then they will have to upload every uh, important documents like proposal, literature review, log books, publication, draft of thesis. At any time that I'm free and I want to check every student's document, it's there. And gang chart or research planning is also very important. Before they came, okay, this is your planning, but probably it will change. And then for your first assessment, you need to show them that you have this uh, proposal for three years. It will change again, probably a bit. So they have to show me this every 
uh, the beginning of the semester, what you will do for this 14 weeks or 20 weeks for a particular semester. And they have to show me, we call it technology transfer activities. Are you going to present in a conference? Are you going to send in a journal? Because if I have my grants, I can help you to pay for the fees and others because I have many students. So I need to be fair to my students. And students need to know about the academic calendar because this is very important so they don't miss any deadline. Especially students who want to submit their thesis, they need to know the deadline. Actually, Taraba State University also have your academic calendar, uh, probably a little bit different than UTM, but every university has one. You have to plan for the PhD journey of your students since the very beginning. You have to sit down with them. You have to ask, okay, how long do you plan? Whether you have scholarship or you, how do you plan? Are you staying here the whole time? Or some students will have to go back for their university, this sort of thing. So from the registration, if the student who is fast track, the second semester they have to present, the third wow. semester they have to do first assessment, Three months before they send their, their thesis, they have to send the thesis and then submit the thesis, how long you wait for Viva, how far is long is your correction of thesis, until the Senate letter. Some students, they only think about convocation until they actually not sure actually the, the time that they need to reach before they reach the convocation. And how long should the supervisor take check the student's thesis? Inda, are you here? No, bro, I'm here. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> How I long? Should, so let, let, us ask, let us no, ask State here. University. Are we all there? Yeah. We're all here, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. I just want to ask you one question, uh, Inda. How long? <laughs> How long? How long should the supervisor take to check the student's thesis? <laughs> there is no specific duration. No either. specific time, of course. Later on, you, you can ask my student. <laughs> Later, yes, yeah. Um, in the mention about networking with other researchers, I also uh, feel that this is very, very important. We have a research group, <clears throat> and um, in UTM, we have everyone belongs to a research group. So you join in the activities. We have to go to conferences and seminars or workshops to meet with other researchers. I send also my students for research attachment and we can meet the authors of references or emailing them and collaborate with them. This is our research group. We call it Applied Algebra and Analysis, AQG. This is our group. And we have around five or six lecturers in here and uh, students around 20 students. So every time before Viva or conferences or seminars, we have a mock Viva. So they present and they practice. We also have workshops among our members in our group. And we also have seminars. And Dr. Raibiha, if you still remember, that was a long time ago, we have that uh, group theory gap. Uh, uh, and, and also a LaTeX. We have seminar in within our research group. Uh, we have monthly seminar. We attend group theory conference. Uh, for each and every one of my students, I ask them to at least go to one uh, international conference, especially in mathematics, okay? Uh, throughout their study, at least they can go to more. Also in UTM, we have international postgraduate conference for postgraduate students. For research attachment, some of my students, especially the Malaysian international students, they are already attached uh, internationally to Malaysia. But still, Dr. Faiz, if you can still remember, you went back to Pakistan, it becomes a research attachment because you have a co-supervisor, external co-supervisor in uh, your country. So this is what we do also. Some students I send back to, sorry, to uh, the US and in UK and also to Brazil. Okay. Future planning, you have to plan with your students how many seminars and conferences, how many papers. I already mentioned about the notice of submission of thesis, 
how or who can be invited to be your internal and external. I always ask my students to show me your table of contents. So not only you have to wait until the third year, at least I know what do you plan to do in your writing of thesis. And then how long you're going to write your thesis, whether you're going to give me a first chapter or second chapter or the whole chapters, and also plan for Viva, and then plan if you have corrections and submission. For publication, this is what I do for uh, with my students. At least the first semester or the first year, you have a review paper uh, during as early as first semester. This will be later contributed to your second chapter for the uh, literature review. In conferences, my students went at least once a year or every semester, postgraduate conference, local conference or international conference so they can meet people, so they can present their work and they can also get some comments from the others. In Scopus journals, in maybe Web of Science and also in Portal journals. And also they have to plan attending whatever workshops are available by UTM in literature review or publication or thesis writing, others. And then since the pandemic, we have been getting this workshop for free and virtually and not only from UTM, which is actually good for the students. Inda, Aliyah, and others, how many research articles does a PhD student need to publish before Viva? At least two. Hmm. And sometimes it depends on the supervisor. Yes. Of <laughs> it's a pop quiz. Right now <laughs> in UTM, compulsory two scopus. Okay, this is the compulsory one. It's true, it depends on the supervisors, but if you can publish as many, it will help you during Viva that they will say, oh, all your work are publishable. People have reviewed this and they have you have published, okay, which is good for you. And why do we need to publish? One, first reason is because it's the requirement of the universities. The second one, which is good for you, right? You publish, so you, you know that it's not your novelties for uh, your results. And for thesis writing, uh, normally I will ask my students, uh, chapter one introduction should be last or sec uh, second one, but give me together for the first three chapters. Let me read through. And then you can add up chapters and then the whole uh, chapters I will go through. First round, second round, until third round. So you can see, the, this is actually, they came to my house and they was looking at my correction. This is what I wrote. Uh, this, this is how uh, we did uh, and how I did for each and every one of my students. And after Viva, make sure I make sure that my students show me all the corrections to make sure that it is smooth, that the students have done all whatever they need to do after the Viva. And just to share some uh, things that I share with the student, uh, I attended their convocation ceremony. You can see the mosque in the back. This is UTM. Or visit my hometown. If you ha this is durian. I don't know if any you have durian in Nigeria. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Ibrahim last time climbed a tree in my uh, hometown. This is dukong. That's the name of the fruits. And sometimes we're just having lunch together, or we can discuss also the research during lunch. And we have Hari Raya celebration. Dr. Inda, I don't know if you remember, oh you came to my house. <laughs> I invited some of the International uh, Student Society also. And we went for bowling, so I got to know the family of my students. Dr. Faiz, I'm sure this is the first time you were playing uh, bowling that time. Or oh, we did some barbecue under the research group uh, at my house. So what do we do? Uh, what do I do? So I just, whenever I receive a student, I need to know my students, the family background, uh, you're single, you, you have family, I have to know whether they're available or their time, their financial, if we have scholarship, if you don't have scholarship, maybe I can uh, help you out when the, the advertisement is out, those kind of things. 
and you have to listen and understand them very carefully and try to think them as your family. Okay, I went too fast for that. Okay, how to manage the supervision? I use the mentor mentee. So the, the senior students can help out with the junior students. Uh, some of them, they have co-supervisors. Some of them, they have external co-supervisors outside Malaysia. And also, if they are not co-supervisors, they become your co-authors. Some of the uh, authors of the references, they contact the authors and they become the co-authors of their uh, papers. And how frequent should you meet your student? Uh, if it's once a week minimum is is uh, very useful for the student. Sometimes they come almost every two days. And if they are independent enough, sometimes they just uh, come every two weeks. But uh, I make sure that my students report to me or send me a report every week, of course. How to manage student difficulties if they don't have enough time. Uh, sometimes even my time is also limited during administrator. So, Talk with your student and uh, make sure that the students can, sometimes they are free in certain time if they are teaching. So we set, so you can come and meet me during your free, uh, more free time. If they have difficulties financially, uh, sometimes if the student don't tell me, I won't know that we when we have this opportunity or scholarship, I won't share because I don't know. So it's better for the students to let me know. Some of them, they have scholarships, so I, they don't have to worry. Uh, if they uh, have a family here, um, if their spouse is coming, you need to find a house. This kind of thing that if I cannot help directly, I have other students to help out with this student and also for a visa. Students, they, they always expect that we are always around, but sometimes we are not. So we have to discuss with them. And that's why I share my schedule. They expect us to know everything that they ask. They are not supposed to. It's not our PhD, <laughs> but we can help as much. They always... Uh, expect us to reply the emails and messages. Okay, this one is okay, expected. Later on, you can ask my students <laughs> if I miss replying and their emails. You're always ready for any help. You're able to motivate. This is what you have to do. You have to be able to motivate, motivate the students. And sometimes we forget to show some appreciations. Always we say, this is not good. This paper is rubbish. But Sometimes we forget to say, oh, this is good work, okay? And friendlier with them, okay? So they can discuss with us, <clears throat> be understanding. Some students, they have, sometimes they are not available. Sometimes they are more than available at a certain time. When students cannot complete the task given, you probably give some extension. <clears throat> and sometimes they ha you have to let them to make decision. This is what I did. When I have, uh, I cannot have frequent meetings. I said, whenever you go to a workshop, you have to write me a report and send me an email. So these students went to uh, the structured course Viva publication workshop. So I know what the students know and what they have joined. I also encourage my students to not only do everything for your research because you will go back, you probably become lecturers, you need to manage so many activities and others. So I said, why don't you join postgraduate student society in your college, be global buddies, <coughs> be mobility students, join Toastmasters Club, join Culture Corner in international office uh, activities, or you can go for research attachment and be a member of a uh, committee of international student society. So just sharing some photos of uh, activities and my, my PhD students, they joined the committee as the faculty of science, including Dr. Faiz here, and also uh, for postgraduate student society, become the president of the postgraduate student society in UTM. So we have conferences, we have other conferences, and then we have uh, outside activities, Dr. Aliu, Dr. Ibrahim, and others. Uh, Atira is also here. We also members of UTM Toastmasters Club where leaders are made. So we do communication skill. This is extracurricular activity. And then you get to meet with the local students, everyone. And now 
when things go virtually, you, you meet everyone around the world. And for the International Student Society, for the Culture Corner, you meet and you share cultural. This is, I'm also sharing this uh, for those of you who have not been to UTM. This is what we are doing in UTM. And with those activities, the student get bonus to receive an award during the convocation. Like Dr. Ibrahim, you, you receive alumni award and other students uh, receive pro chancellors award. After the supervision uh, time, I have this uh, for mathematics, I'm not sure for others, but we have this project in which you, you click your name and you can see all the three. You click my advisor, you can see your siblings. So this can help in uh, looking who is who in your field. And of course, everyone has a WhatsApp group. So all my ex-PhD students, they are in this group just to uh, share latest news and uh, emailing list. So we have conferences. We still connect with uh, each other uh, through the mailing list. We still do research activities with our alumni. Last time we have a G international seminar series in which we invited our students to be speakers. And also we invited them. Most of them, they become lecturers to share in a workshop. And I have this uh, mentor mentee three for my students, starting from number one. And then uh, the green one is the student become the main, I become the co. So I still uh, have grandchildren and it's growing and growing and growing. And my uh, granddaughter already have a PhD. So I'm a great grandma. <laughs> and uh, for the graduated student, I also keep everything in uh, Google Drive. So if any, uh, of the juniors want to have like their thesis, their publication, their papers, it's all there. And some of them, they come back to UTM become the postdoctoral, uh, like these two of my students. And we have to do international, other international collaboration, like my collaborators from Iran and Indonesia and Iraq, and we uh, be make them become external to my student. So as a conclusion, it's actually a really huge responsibility to be a supervisor. You can see that they are with us for three or four years. And the criteria of an impactful supervisor, I hope I have shared that. And I'm sharing again uh, some of the tips to be knowledgeable, to be resourceful, to be passionate and compassionate, to be punctual is very important, ever helpful, friendly approachable, smart, intelligent, caring, supportive. This is like a never ending story, yeah? Understanding, committed, highly disciplined, great communication skill, great networking, highly skilled in the area, alert of all deadlines, sincere. So that's the happy ending of my Viva from uh, my viva was in 98. Some of them are not there yet, not born yet. Yeah, in the <laughs> my PhD journey for three years and four months. This is my supervisor. And you remember the, the little kids when I started my PhD. So that's them during my viva. And this is the convocation in UTM yeah, during Dr. Ibrahim's convocation. So this is after they receive. Um, that in the convocation. This is my convocation in which my supervisor put the, what do you call that, um, in the, on the stage. And of course, my final dedication to my family. Um, I'm a mother of a wife and a mother of three sons. With that, thank you very much, everyone. And you can visit my website. You can see all my details, my publication and others. We can also connect it through my email here and also through LinkedIn. With that, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Inda. I pass back to you. Well, I think I should allow Prof. Mustafa to say something, but uh, I am speechless. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Noor Haniza Simon, for this uh, generous sharing. Thank you, Prof. Uh, yes, Dr. Uh, Inda. Yeah. Yeah, yes, thank you so much. Uh, but let me to formally uh, welcome the registrar of the university.
para pasti di review ya terus harus saya welcome ada ada di inggris dan juga sama dengan apa yang kita baca dan bisa dan ini the third main which is a request on how to be an impact on supervisor that we had from that we had from professor Musa of our university of technology in Malaysia and uh, we had to learn how to be an impactful supervisor and then study it from the human to the end. And of course, we are expected to have the heart of the And uh, it's just a kind of something that we start to research and so such that, okay, what is the level of compliance? To what extent to help me come with this criteria as mentioned? Being cheerful, being helpful, being cheerful, being intelligent, being accommodating, tolerating, and whatever from the human to the end. We ask ourselves this uh, do I have all these faculties? Am I ready to see my students as uh, my children, as a family, as somebody that uh, is ready to share the experience, to serve as the mentor, so that today, tomorrow, and later, you always look on all those That is all about education. That is all about supervision, especially at the the and connect so much so that uh, you yeah. have a reference point as a mentor anytime, anywhere somebody look at you. Oh, that's my supervisor, somebody that thought that you this, that makes me what I am. So that relationship is expected to sustain. Okay, thank you, bro. Not the show, not the ball to have so I don't care about this. Okay, thank you, Prof. Sorry for that. So, don't in that. Yes, Prof. We can wrap up after making the conversation. Yes, actually, we have discussions also from our students. Just three, three minutes or so. Okay. Is it okay? Can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? What uh, at this juncture? Thank you so much, Professor Mustafa Baba. It be the Dean Postgraduate Studies School of Postgraduate Studies, um, Taraba State University. I want to most sincerely welcome uh, the Registrar. Uh, uh, Mr. Bibinu, who is here with us also. I can also see the Deputy Dean Postgraduate uh, Studies, Organa uh, Professor uh, Chris Amuti. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I, I have, I know in Nigeria this is morning, and some of you have other things to do, actually. Uh, we have three discussions from uh, the student, direct students of Professor Uliza. Uh, permit me to, please to uh, introduce Dr. Ibrahim Gambo, who has another schedule uh, to first uh, share within three to five minutes uh, to say something. Dr. Ibrahim Gambo. Thank you very much, Dr. Indabri Mumini, and uh, a very good evening, Prof. It has been long that I've seen her, so I'm just seeing her. And uh, of course, uh, a very good morning to all the participants from Nigeria and evening to all the participants from Malaysia. Uh, actually, you know, I always feel thrilled, like so full of euphoria to be listening to Prof sharing all these things because. I just like feel like I'm just sharing. It's like she's just sharing from my heart directly. Uh, and of course, I can be vindicated from the slides that she has uh, just uh, delivered her, her supervision with because I'm one of the most recent graduated students of Prof. Nur Hanizu Sarmi. And I'm very happy that, you know, uh, Prof. Uh, is been. Uh, invited for this prestigious uh, seminar, and also she has gotten enough time to, to 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 share some portion. Of course, I don't think she were able to share uh, ten percent of what I knew 
prof is doing in, in usually i'm not hyphen actually this is the testimony of uh, what i passed through so don't feel like i'm just hyphen the whole thing i don't think she has shared 10 percent of uh, what she's supposed to maybe share in her own way of practicing the supervision so uh, of course uh, i used to remember the first thing that maybe she told me when i started to become like uh, close so close to her in the sense that i'm no longer uh, much to the uh, maybe phd students but more to the mentee and also maybe uh, maybe uh, so to say a lecturer in training so she 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 always used to tell me that ibrahim you can't give what you don't have and I, of course i always put that at the back of my mind you cannot give what you don't have and you cannot yeah of course you can pretend to preach what you don't uh, practice but at least the, the the practice is always going to uh, show the real uh, part of you so this what you don't have you cannot give is one of the driving things that i learned from prof nisa and she always almost 90 percent of her teaching is uh, by, by 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 doing actually by getting you involved directly of course she has shared so much about maybe how she interact with the students I, I don't think i need to go much deep on that but of course uh, along the way i have to maybe mention one thing or the other but one of the most important thing that i learned from prof nisa is communication she is very very often in everything from before you become a student she will ask you what is your background how do this? She will do a background check. Of course, she mentioned about the background check of the student. She will do all the background check before you even become the student. That's the first thing. And the second thing, whatever she's expecting from the student, she shared it directly. Okay, you know, I'm this type of person. I have this, I have this, 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 and that. So like there is an open communication between her and all the students. And I think this is very important for all the supervisors. And I'm very happy that she shared a little bit about uh, those things. And then the second thing is that uh, as a supervisor, she always say, this is my duty. When I, whenever she do something for me, I will say, oh, prof, that's very good. Thank you very much. She said, no, that is my role. That's my responsibility. So she 100% takes her responsibility without any complaint. Because of course, once she accepted, then she already, she would be very clear about what is expected from her and then what is expected from you. And she has her own plans. Everything has been determined from the time that she comes to the office to the last minute of her stay in the office. And of course, she always graciously add, of course, now it's after five o'clock in Malaysia and she's here presented. So she always give us that time. If things get jump packed, like they are more than the office hours thing, of course, she will graciously uh, give you the time to, to discuss on things. Of course, for me, I even used to go to her house to sleep over there and discuss things about the television and uh, sometimes even over the exercise machines. I'm not sure whether the trail is still there, but I used to enjoy that one too. So I, I will bring it in her family and, and at least to discuss about the academic matters, get some signatures, get some forms. And another thing is she always shares opportunities, whether that is needed for you or that is not needed for you, she will share that opportunity as long as it's related to you. And of course, one good, quality of not only a supervisor, but maybe an administrator is prop can have 100 email on a single day. But let me tell you this, if an email that you send to prop Nisa stays more than 24 hours without reply, know that there is something wrong. Whether your email has gone to the fan or has not reached her. But as long as the email reaches her, that is a, an automatic reply of within the 24 hours. And you have to do the same as her students because once she sends you an email, even if it's okay, you have to reply that this is okay. It means to acknowledge that you have received that email. And of course that culture is, is uh, of course inculcated in all her students. I don't think you hardly send an email to us that you will not receive a reply within the 24 hours. And, and of course that is something. And one, one, one important thing that I have to mention here is that even how to send the email itself is going to be, <laughs> you're going to be taught by Prof Nisa. The first thing that I remember during my postdoctoral teaching, she, she went to the class. The first thing that she wanted to teach those undergraduate students, she said, okay, do you know how to write a proper email? Then they were like, okay, no. Then she teach them from writing the subject of the email 
to the signature of the email. And I think those that are following her on Facebook, recently you can see in her master's class, she's teaching some of the students that this is how you should have a signature in your email. This is how you should avoid your email to go, going to spam, or this is how is that. So this is to tell you that every single knowledge that you are in need of is either she will teach you or she will direct you to where you get it. That is just for sure. As long as you need this thing, yes, you have to learn it. And of course, that's 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 the the, the 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 one thing. And she's very passionate about what she's doing. Of course, her Facebook friends can testify to that. She she is in the uh, very good administrator. She shared her administrative things. She shared her teaching things. Every she's very passionate. So being a supervisor, of course, I learned that you have to be passionate about all these things, and then you have to take the responsibility. And of course, one of the key things that I am yet to maybe adopt that fully is keeping the records. Uh, from this, I'm. I think her year one notes you can find in our office if you go there. Maybe, Dr. Inda, if you go to the next uh, meeting, sure. you should sure, ask absolutely. for those things. So you can get her year one university uh, lecture notes in her office. So she keeps record of every single thing, of all the students' activities. I have my folder in Provincia's office now. If you go there, you will see all the activities I have from the beginning of my studies to the end of my program there. And every other student is having that. So it's like once you are seeking for a reference letter or any other thing, she do not need to ask you anything. She knows you anyway, but she will go through the folder and get whatever things that is needed. And then that is all. And of course, she, she takes care about all this. She is very supportive. The, the way she mentioned as a good provider, you have to be uh, supportive. She's supportive in all aspects, financial, you know, emotional, Thank motivational you. and everything else, everything else. Thank yeah, so, uh, and of course, uh, I, I'm not sure whether I already exhausted some yeah, of it. Yes, that's why I said you. I cannot be able to say <laughs> Thank you. one, one thing of what yeah. she said. But of course, uh, this is one other thing that maybe I would like to conclude with is the issue of being given a compliment. She is the type that whenever she understands that there is so much stress in the group, maybe in the research, then she would say, okay, let's go for body, uh, badminton. And then everybody will be like, oh, chap up. Then we forget about all the research things and then go for the sports. So she always create the happy moments. And that's, that's the, I think, the, the, the last thing that I will just uh, maybe try to say. And of course, she made mention uh, about the achievable objectives. We always said achievable objectives. You know, if I think I will continue talking, I will talk for the whole day without exhausting what I said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to, to share a little bit about these things. And I hope this will change the mindset of uh, the, the, the supervisors that are available here on how to uh, run, uh, maybe supervise, uh, not only the undergraduate student, but the postgraduate student, because the postgraduate uh, study is so, you know, it's, it's so, so hectic and uh, uh, it needs to be handled emotionally uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, back to thank the you so much. That has been a testimony from uh, a direct student of uh, Professor Noor Hadiza Simon, uh, one of the favorite, of course. <laughs> he is uh, now in Bauchi State University. I think it's an opportunity for us to uh, maybe invite him for even being an examiner or visiting so that we can have uh, a feel. We are not doing that so that uh, to uh, advertise, but we are coming up also. It is time for us to feel how others do things so that we also meet up with the global best practices. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Brother Ibrahim Gambo, and uh, thank you so much for sharing. May I now use the opportunity to invite the second uh, super, uh, supervisee who is now a doctor in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Rabiha Birikia. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Mu'minin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Hi, everyone. I'm Rabha Mahmoud from Sudan. Recently, I'm working in Saudi Arabia at Shagra University. Uh, thank you, Prof. Mustafa, for inviting me here to be uh, as Prof. Niza EX student. Uh, first, uh, my sincere thanks. 
and appreciation to my wonderful supervisor, Prof. Nida Sarmin, for providing me with guidance and concept to success in my PhD. She has been a great uh, mentor in mapping my PhD journey, advising on research topic, connecting me with a uh, resource I needed. I am very grateful for all support that she has extended to me during my PhD. I started my PhD studies at UTM uh, in 2015, like any student who moved to another country, I had many concerns about how to deal in the new environment. I remember being very nervous when I, I was getting ready for my first meeting. I didn't know what to expect. But when I met Prof. Niza, all my fears are gone. And after that, she invited me and my husband with our friends to dinner in her beautiful house where we meet her sweet uh, family. And we had a uh, very nice time with them. At the beginning of the research, when I started my research, sometimes, you know, as like any uh, student start his research, I feel confused and I can hardly understand what I read. The progress was very slow. Every day I asked myself, did you do, what did you do today, Rabiha? And sometimes, you know, uh, I feel guilty that I left my family in Saudi Arabia and been here. And sometimes I feel I do nothing. But Rufniza helped me to keep going and ask me read many papers as I can and meet with fellow uh, PhD students and that helped a lot. She also helped me a lot to attend conference and publish article. I think I attend about five conference during my PhD and uh, followed by two journal publications. In addition, Brof uh, enabled me to get many skills, not uh, PhD, but hold PhD with many good skills, attending workshop, register in UTM Toastmaster Club, as well as uh, reviewing some uh, paper in my field, uh, also assisting uh, the master student. Uh, in, in their research, finally, I can give some tips uh, to new PhD students I go through them very fast. Uh, patient, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the PhD is an exercise of patience. So you have sit, read, write, discuss all this. So you need uh, patience. Uh, Self-discipline, uh, and this is very uh, important to put regular schedule. Uh, don't say it can be tomorrow. Keep track of time, as Prof. Niza uh, mentioned. And planning, you have uh, to know where you are. Go you are not going. You are you going? Uh, sure, you are going to your CCs. And also about deadlines. Uh, keep discussing your progress. Uh, and uh, finally, take the lead of your PhD because it's yours. It's not your uh, supervisors. And I learned from uh, Prof. Niza, <laughs> don't forget to comment any step in your PhD by taking photo, because it's, it will be very sweet uh, memories. Uh, if, you, uh, if you allow to me, yes, I can share some photo. I take it during my PhD in UTM. No time. <laughs> Sorry. Just one minute. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> That's okay. Is a <laughs> From the uh, global best practice for our clinical and supervisors, how to interact with our students across the globe. 
So what is to do with not necessary to have a key of this or even on the share screen or whatever you can yes share screen, yeah. Yeah, you can share screen. Can, can we check it that way? I, I think we can feel how you state maybe we get it in our website later on. Just one minute, maybe yes, one minute. <laughs> yeah, click the share screen and find the yes. Can I hear you, Rabiha? Yeah, unmute your mic. Unmute your mic, Dr. Rabiha. Maybe you need to unmute, Rabiha. This uh, at my house. And yeah, Rabiha, unmute. And mute, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, right? Ooh, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so sorry. I think we can. Uh, it's, it's, it's... See, yeah, you see, you see this fo uh, photo is in Prof Nisa house. Uh, yes. First time we we met Prof Nisa. Yeah. Uh, and we take dinner there. Uh, mm -hmm. This photo, I think, after a G meeting, our group meeting, as I mentioned, as the Prof Nisa mentioned, and with the yes, let's. Let me, and this photo after my Viva voice, and we feel very happy, me and Borofniza. Rabiha, you have stopped sharing. You have to share again. <laughs> <laughs> have I share. stopped sharing? Yeah, you stopped okay. sharing already. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for taking time. Okay, sorry. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That has been the second uh, sample. Because I have, I have many nice photos. Send, send it to from Lisa so that we, we get it from the website. I think it's okay. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, may I now use uh, this opportunity uh, to inform uh, all our own uh, participants and, of course, audience all over there. Uh, that we have the last student of Prof. Niza, who is now an associate professor, Dr. Faiz Muhammad from Pakistan, who now give us his own sharing also. Dr. Associate Professor, Dr. Faiz Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Inda, uh, for your uh, nice compliment. Uh, let me take this opportunity to also thank the Vice Chancellor, Professor Bagu, and also the Dean, Professor Mustafa, that they provide such a good opportunity uh, for the student of, uh, uh, as well as for the faculty of uh, Nigeria uh, to. Uh, invite such a dynamical person uh, who is, uh, I think, uh, uh, mean uh, the one person which I know in my career, a real time manager. Uh, 
Uh, I always give in my country, uh, in my every meeting, uh, whenever there is some problem of uh, time management, so I, I always give her name that if you want to see on the earth a real time manager, so uh, she is my supervisor, Professor uh, Dr. Nurhaniza Sarmin. Uh, I would not uh, take much time because uh, comprehensively she discuss uh, each and everything and uh, also the, com uh, the compliment provided by their uh, ex-students. Uh, I think uh, now it's quite clear for all of us that she really deserved the prize from our side. But I will just share a few things uh, uh, which I feel that uh, the first thing which mentioned the Prof. Neza about the time manager. So all of us are thinking that uh, it might be usually just on the paper, but no, uh, it's not on the paper only. She is really uh, doing the time managing uh, and she is really a time manager. So uh, this is the quite uh, attractive uh, thing for me that she give time to each and every student faculty, administrative, family, relatives, and outside uh, the, uh, this gathering. So she is really wonderful as uh, time scheduling, uh, really uh, very much impressive. Uh, I remember, uh, might be I'm the one, uh, a poor student, you can say, because uh, I take around 15 uh, corrections from my, for my thesis. So she took around 15 rounds to finalize my thesis. In fact, I submitted my thesis in fifth semester, but within that very much little time, she take 15 rounds. She always listen to the students uh, like uh, their children, uh, which uh, I didn't see in much uh, community uh, here as well as in other country that uh, the student uh, are not uh, taking serious by their supervisor. But she always uh, consider the students to be their children. That's why uh, she is giving uh, time. I uh, here I would also like uh, to share that she engaged their student in a reviewing activity, uh, how to submit a paper, how to respond uh, for a paper uh, when uh, they get some minor or major uh, revision and how to submit. So at the end of uh, your degree, she is not only uh, give, giving you a certificate, but she uh, make you a full-fledged supervisor when you graduated so you are you know how to supervise the student and uh, here uh, I mean uh, to uh, just acknowledge that I uh, here uh, I'm just graduated in uh, 2013 but up to now I, I produced two PhD students 10 MS students and still 12 students are under my supervision and PhD and MPhil. And up to now, I have published more than 50 research article in a reputed journal with a high impact factor like fractal, uh, like neural computing and application uh, results in physics and much more other uh, journals. So this is in fact, uh, the contribution of my supervisor, which I learned the academic skills uh, the academic write, uh, writing, the scientific writing, and the response to the journals, uh, uh, all the things I learned from uh, the supervisor. Here, I didn't well, mention one thing uh, for my supervisor, and I think this will be the first time that Prof. Niza will know that what I was thinking when I was student. So when she was giving me any task like reviewing a paper, submit a paper, so I was thinking that how... Uh, the supervisor is doing her work on me. I was thinking that this is not my work. This is the work of a professor. Why she is doing his work on me.
her work and me. But uh, later on, when I graduated and uh, when I joined the university, so then I realized, no, there she, in fact, she know age and everything, but she want to me uh, be like a supervisor. That's why she guided me in that direction as well. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I think uh, I would not um, take uh, much time, but uh, really this is a platform. Uh, once again, I would like to thank Prof. Niza and all of you for providing such a good uh, good opportunity uh, to present. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.